All right, everybody. Hey, <laughs> welcome to my first live stream. All right, we're going to be making some roll logs. Anyway, I'm Stacy Budge Camison with Urban Gypsy, if you don't know who I am. Um, I am based out of the Raleigh, North Carolina area, just outside in Cary. And I'm a fiber artist. I um, started ma uh, in the business with Urban Gypsy Artisan Yarn and had been dyeing and, and hand spinning yarn. And now I've kind of backed off of the yarn business and have just been making fiber art. And that's been my focus lately. So um, a few weeks ago, I posted, a couple of days ago, I posted a picture. Hey, Jessica, how are you? <laughs> and I posted a picture of, um, of my uh, roll logs that I've been making. I have a brand new blending board and I've been making roll logs um, to, for the art yarn. And I decided that uh, maybe that's a good thing to try and do this live uh, video. So pardon me, this is my first live video. I hope everything's going to be okay. Some of you caught my test as I'm on the phone with my best friend the other day. <laughs> so anyway, um, also excuse the background noise. Uh, we live really close to the fire station as well as the, there's a street just right outside the window as well as our heat pump. So you might hear a little background noise. Um, other than that, uh, a little housekeeping. Um, I have, uh, you can ask questions in the chat and I am excited to answer your questions. Uh, uh, do me a favor though, if you can, hey Dean, how are you? Yeah, I know my hair is getting really long. <laughs> I get it cut once a year. Anyway, if you have any questions, if you can start it with a, a capital Q. That's going to help me um, as I'm, you know, trying to work here and keep an eye on the chat. It'll help flag those questions for me. If you forget, don't worry about it. I'm going to try and catch all the questions that you guys might have, but that would help me out a lot. Um, also, I wanted to um, just kind of explain that I am pretty new to the blending board. And I've been playing a little bit and I've been making some fun stuff. I've watched a lot of YouTube videos myself. Um... So this is, I, I have a feeling that I'm breaking a lot of rules. I tend to make these big gigantic things because sometimes drafting out, a lot of people will draft out and make smaller roll logs. And with some of the chunky fibers that I have in here that I'm using for the art yarn, drafting out smaller uh, roll logs is just like bending my teeth. So I just kind of go with it and just stick with the big ones. Anyway, um, that being said, uh, so today I'm making these big roll logs and the big roll logs, um, these are going to be less than four ounces. So, um, oh, from the Netherlands. Wow. Hi. Hi. Uh, <laughs> how are you guys doing? All right. So these big roll logs are less than four ounces. And generally when I was making yarn, um, things tend to fall into four ounce increments. Um, usually, you know, two four ounce skeins would give you a scarf, one four ounce skein would give you a hat and some, some extra, or a pair of socks, or a pair of mittens. Uh, hey Kathy, how are you? Anyway, so four ounce increments, but when I'm working with the roll logs, I'm definitely getting less than four ounces, and that's okay. Here's why. Okay, so many of you guys saw the big picture that I posted either on Instagram or on um, or it was in the newsletter uh, that announced this event so I th this this is the yarn here you know what I'm gonna switch I'm gonna switch the camera so oh the technology is awesome all right so here you can see um, and, and you can see the chat right there again put put a cue if you have a question so these roll logs, this is similar to what I had spun or made the other week. This, this is the yarn I spun up with, with those, those roll logs. Um, now this, these yarns here, this stuff is, these are single plies. And I tell you, like this one, has probably three roll logs in it. And what I'll generally do is just rather than starting a new spindle, 
I'll just go ahead and continue on with with just this with a new like I'll just pick up a new roll log and either I'll just break the yarn at that place or or not I'll just keep going so these are all hand spun singles made with those roll logs this is this is a two ply that I made with the roll logs um, there's probably like six roll logs in this one and then these are some coarse spun um, skeins that I made with the roll logs anyway so that's that's the kind of yarn that I'm using. Now, here's what I'm using that for. Many of you know that I've been doing a lot of weaving. Anyway, so here's some of the weaving. Now, if you guys followed my Vlogmas, this is that scarf that I made from Vlogmas. So I might take, I might take something like this big chunky one and use it for the warp, um, for this kind of weaving where I'd use the art yarn warps and then I'd use the finer lace weight yarns to to do that weaving or I might use it you know this is the the kind of uh, weaving that I like to do you know where I take just a bunch of my scrap yarns and so some of these chunky places this is like a hand spun here uh, oh this is a wonderful hand spun from uh, Moon Rover I'm a big fan of her work oh here's a question where do you get your fiber and what spinning wheel do you use for your art yarn? All right, um, I get my, gosh, I get my fiber from everywhere. And I'll go through that because I'm going to share with you some of the fiber I'm going to use today. And the spinning wheel I use, I have two. One of them is a Spinolution um, Mach 2. And eh, I like that one okay, but I got an art yarn flyer for my Louette. And I really, really, really love that one. That's the one I'm primarily using. That's actually what I used for all of these yarns. Anyway, okay. So yeah, the art yarn, here's one that's primarily has a lot of art yarn and then I have some other textures like here's some crochet that I messed up that I just put in there. Um, some ball fringe that you can get from from like a, a, sewing, a, a sewing shop like trim. And then this is a wild, wild art yarn. This isn't mine. This is actually um, Deborah Lambert um, with Picasso Moon. I bought a skein from her. But you could do this because in the roll logs, we have, you know, locks that we're, we're putting into there. So anyway, this is some of the weaving that I use. Um, there's also, oh, let me show you this. This... This, those are mostly scarves, but this is what I've been doing lately. If you guys follow me on Instagram, you know that I've uh, been doing some clay work. So this this is a wall hanging um, that I made, and it was a solution for for uh, a way to hang that yarn. I mean the the weaving because uh, I didn't want to do it necessarily off of a stick, so I did this clay thing. But yet, again, you can see where I've used uh, some of the hand spun. And I mixed it with some hand dyed, and here's this is some sari silk, and oh, I don't think I have any sock yarn in this one. Oh, there's some little pieces of felt. Anyway, that, and here's another one that I made, this clay header, and then this this piece. You can see some of the art yarn in that. Anyway, so that's that. But if I were to use my art yarns for knitting or crocheting. This is the kind of stuff. Now this, there's a video, oops, and now it's a hot mess because I had it on the floor. This is a video, I had a video in YouTube, if you go into my channel, you'll see where I did this hairpin lace with this art yarn. And I like this because it, it shows off, it shows off this, the yarn really well. Anyway, so you can check that out in, uh, in my YouTube channel, look for the, the crocheted hairpin lace video. Um, and then this is a scarf that I did where I took some of that wild hand spun and a little bit of sari ribbon and even just some brightly colored worsted weight yarn and did, you know, that wrap stitch where you wrap it around the needle a bunch of times and then, and then uh, drop the, the stitch 
as you're as you're going back across and so it makes this elongated stitch and again those elongated stitches like in that other scarf is wonderful for showing off art yarns because otherwise you know sometimes the texture of the art yarn gets lost in the stitches but if you can have some areas where the stitch is extended then it's going to show off that art yarn a whole lot more anyway all right let's get down to business so this is my new baby I got this at the um, beginning of the year. I had resisted getting a blending board mostly because I, I don't know, mostly because I have uh, uh, three carters, drum carters, so I didn't really need them, think I needed it. But for some reason, I just decided I wanted to have one of these um, to be able to I don't know, they have it be a little more portable than having to like be stuck in one place carding in my studio. So anyway, this is a Louette. I'm a big fan of their, their equipment. That's, you know, my first wheel was a Louette and, uh, and one of my drum carters is the same thing. So this is, um, the board that I'm going to be using. Uh, I also, so what, what came with that? You get some dowel rods. You also get this this brush thing, which is awesome. And that's what comes with this this blending board. But I tell you, as I've been working, especially with this the chunky art yarn stuff, um, I have a few tools that I've added that's really I think has helped. Um, hand cards. Now this was the first thing that that I had bought before my drum card. This is how I used to card my fibers with hand cards and this is how I used to make roll logs. Um, so hand cards are really great for um, for brushing that fiber and we'll go over the difference between this and using this. I also have this. This is my drum card cleaner for my Louette. Um, and this is really handy just for getting like the, the little bits of fiber that are down in here and also for helping to pick some of the fibers up as you're rolling the roll log. I also have this dog brush. <laughs> I think it's actually a cat brush. It came with a cat scratcher. Anyway, the dog brush I actually serves a different purpose than this. For some reason this really pushes the fibers down better, whereas this kind of blends the fibers within the board. So I really like using this, and you can get these for super cheap. I mean, here in the States, you can get these for just a couple of dollars um, at the, heck, you could get it at the grocery store even. Um, I also like using my, my doffer pin. I haven't used it that much, but for, you know, picking out any of the, the, anything that's getting stuck down in there, it's really good for picking that stuff up. Some of the other things that I use, I keep a pair of scissors on hand. Now, I'm not a big fan of cutting my roving or any of my wool fibers, but this is good for like if you're using sari silk or yarn bits or some of the other fibers, and I'm going to go over those in a minute. I also like having a can of compressed air because that's going to help get the dust. You know, uh, when you're dealing with farm wools, a lot of times you're still going to get vegetable matter that's going to get down in your stuff and that helps clean that vegetable matter out of your board. So anyway, so that's the equipment. Now for my fiber, the types of fibers that I use. Now mostly um, the reason why, the thing that makes art yarn art yarn for the most part are the locks and the textures. So this right here, I don't know if you guys can see. Okay, right, this right here, this is my big treasure bin. Every time I dye some fiber, I'm tossing stuff in there. So this has, I don't know if you guys can see, this has all kinds of stuff. This has lots of little bits and ends, little ends of roving, little ends of farm wool. Um, this is some, this is some denim. This is some recycled denim that I got, I think, from Little Barn. They go to uh, SAF. 
but you can find and you know what when I'm done I'll put some resources in the in, in the in the um, description of this video because this video will stay on YouTube so anyway so this is some recycled denim I have locks lots of locks I have you know bits of roving that got a little felted um, I've got all kinds of stuff. I've got, uh, this is, this is some um, silk thrums. Um, I've got sari silk. Now the sari silk, this is good. You know, you'll, you'll want to cut this up into smaller pieces with the scissors. Um, same with, oh yeah, this banana silk. This banana silk is a hot mess. This banana silk, you'll want to cut up smaller bits because it just, it's really strong and it doesn't tear very well. And you can put bits of fabric, you can put all, put all kinds of stuff. So I just keep my treasure bin right here. Now, recently I went through and, um, I went through and over dyed some of my roving that I just hadn't been spinning, that it's either stuff that was from the shop that never sold, or it's stuff that I had in my stash that I just no longer like the color of. So a lot of times, you know, when I spin, you know, there's there's rovings. This is a set of rovings that I just love the over dyed colors. This is the type of stuff that I'm just not going to want to put in in the on the blending board because it's going to muddy these colors up. I like these these colors the way they are. I want to try and preserve some of this mottled look a little more. So this type of stuff, I'll just put in my spinning basket straight up. The type of stuff that I like to save for the blending board are smaller bits. You can see these, these colors. I don't mind if they get a little muddied, you know, colors that are just a little more tonal. Um, that's, that's the kind of roving. Now I, I keep, those kind of separated out from from this stash because at some point I'm going to want a base and so I'm going to keep this roving and you'll see when I start going into that stuff. I also have this is <laughs> this bowl was a wedding gift. <laughs> it's a trifle bowl. I never make trifles. Anyway, these are are thrums. This is like little some of this is you know, my friends will give me leftover clippings from when they uh, have uh, made uh, their knitting, the stuff that they cut off. Here's little bits of fabric from somebody who had been sewing. There's embroidery floss in here. Little bits of fiber from when I cleaned my drum. There's all kinds of stuff. There's, there's probably even, let me see if I can find it. This, wait. Oh, this. No, that's not it. <laughs> oh, here we go. This right here. This is this is loom waste. So this is when I, you know, you always are going to have some kind of loom waste from when you're warping a loom. So I just turn around and put it right back in here. And this makes great texture in in the art yard. So we'll put some of that into this as well. So generally. There's two ways you can start off. Oh, wait, let me go through my tool. I have notes. <laughs> so let me make sure I'm not missing things. Okay. So there's two rules of, of thought. A lot of people, and I do this all the time, I will gather up like packs of, of, of fibers that all kind of coordinate. I'll go through my bins. I'll pull out, you know, some of my Angelina stash. I will, uh, I'll pull out some of my thrums. I'll just go through and I'll just kind of pull together just a color palette, you know, a general overall one. And these bins, these are from the dollar section at Target. These are awesome. I've got tons of these. So here's another one that I pulled together. You can see this, well, except for that color. There's a, a pink, a pink and brown and, and red stash going on here. And I added, and if you guys read any of my blog posts, I add a little bit of, of, of contrast in there just to add 
a wow. It's kind of like uh, Noro does the same thing. You think they have this harmonious colorway, and then there's always that one color you're on the edge of cutting out of the yarn because you think it doesn't go, but it adds just that something. So that's what I like to do. Sometimes get these batches together, or you can just start off and go willy nilly. So I think, let me put this back over here. I think what we're going to do is start off, did I knock that? And go willy nilly, I think. Now let's start with a patch, a batch. Okay, so I'm going to set this stuff aside for now. And we are going to go with this. All right. Hey, everybody who's who's starting off new or who's coming in. Uh, new to drop spindling, dyeing, blending, anyone combining beadwork or wire with yarn. Um, you know, I did. Let me show you what I did here. Uh, do I even have it here? It, you know, what I do a lot of times when I'm spinning is I'll thread either beads or buttons onto, onto um, like a, a, a cone thread, a cone yarn, and, and then when I spin I'll just draw the bead or button up and, and put that in there. Either I'll do it with a coarse bun or I'll do it as I'm plying and I'll ply with that thread. Um, that's how I like to use it. Anyway, all right. Back, we're focusing. So, what I generally do, or what I had been doing, I tried starting the other way around where you start with the fine fibers and end with the chunky, and that ended up putting the chunky fibers on the inside of the of the row log. I guess if you, because what I'm, anyway, we'll just start. All right, so I start with some curls. Here are some somewhat matted together curls and I'm just going to take some of these and put them right here and I'm just going to place them on there. I'm not dragging them across because the curls I don't want them to be brushed in there as much as I want them to be as you can see I want them to be kind of laying on top um, and that's going to preserve the curl when I spin that yarn. All right, so I'm just going to throw some curls down. Try and get them kind of even rolling. All right, that'll be good. So I found. Rather than brushing them in there, like I said, I don't want to brush them, but I want to I want to just kind of push them down in there. So you can see, you know, the length the this brush is kind of just pushing these curls down into that board. They're all smashed into the teeth, and that kind of keeps the curl from becoming brushed out. Um, all right, so next, so what we're going to do, we're starting with chunky fibers, and then we're going up to fine fibers. So I'm going to add, next I'm going to add some of this silk, sorry, silk thrum stuff. Of course, this is long stringy, so this is where I need my scissors. I'm going to... Cut some of that. All right. And this I'm going to kind of drag down across. See, this is another reason why I can't do small roll logs with this stuff because trying to pull off small roll logs with this will make you mad. It'll bend your teeth. All right. I'm just going to do some streaks of that. Let me cut some more of this. All right. Can you guys hear me okay? If you can't hear, then, well, if you can't hear, then you couldn't hear this. But yeah, let me know that the, the volume's okay. If I need to turn it up, I can totally do that. So, all right. 
So there's that. And this again, I'm going to just kind of push it down in there. This one I can kind of brush a little bit. black icky whatever that is all right so there's that so if we're building coarse fibers up to finer fibers the next I'm gonna throw in is some let's throw in some farm wool Ooh, that's interesting let's put some of this in there okay this is gonna be wild it's like the 80s this would be an 80s yarn right you can hear me okay thank you Denise volumes good thank you Dean Thank you, Charlotte. Thank you, Pris Priska. Priska. I hope I got that right. If I'm slaying your name, I'm sorry. I apologize. All right. So I'm adding some of this purple. Down through here. All right, I'm also going to add some of this brown, I think. Yeah, let's add some of this brown. This is a natural Cordell, um, I think. Natural Cordell, or a fin. Could be a fin, I'm not sure. All right. I'm going to add this in there. stripes of it. All right, I'm going to stop and I'm going to go with this because this kind of pushes it down without really brushing it. So it's not going to blend it. It's going to keep some of the texture of that, um, of that farm wool intact. So when I spin it, it's going to turn into like a little nap or like a little bump. It adds a little bit of texture. So I try to keep some of that farm wool intact. Oh, no. This is a different color wool, I think. Maybe I'll put some of that in there. All right. I'm going to go back and put some of this in, in here. Too. No, I'm going to wait and save that for later. All right. Let me add some of this. I don't even know what this is. I think this must be... Well, this is vegetable matter here, so let's pull that out. This, I think, is like from the bottom of my fiber bin where a bunch of different things got mixed together because there's a little bit of sparkle, there's a little bit of farm wool, there's a little bit of all, all kinds of stuff. Let me add some more. Let's add some of this dark red. I think this is a melon fiber that got felted in in the dye bath. Not terribly felt it, but it got kind of clumped together a bit. Alright, and I'm not worrying about trying to get it even. I'm just gonna throw it in there. Let's add some more of this purple. Oh look at this. This is interesting. This is like that's like a little bit of fabric or something that came from the stash that ended up getting dyed in there. Pretty good for, for that. Right. Okay, so next I'm going to get a little finer. I'm going to go with this. This is some remnants of a, oh my gosh, there's a lot of it, of a um, alpaca and silk roving. You know what? I'm going to skip it over first. I'm going to go with this. 
This is a merino and sea cell roving just a little bit. So with this, I'm going to try and get a little more even with this. I'm going to take that down. And I'm going to try and get a more solid layer. So this is going to become somewhat of like a base. little bit. All right. So with this, I'll get some of the bottom part. Try to get a little more even. All right. So I tell you again, this dog brush kind of pushes it down. Now I'm going to go back over it this and that kind of this kind of smooths it out just a little bit more I don't know if you can see it's going to distribute that and smooth it out just a hair more all right so now I'm going to add another layer but I'm going to use this alpaca silk business Get the vegetable matter out of that. All right, so again, I'm going to go a little, try and do an evenish layer. Did I just knock that out of place? There we go. Sorry. Okay. Add a little more right here to even it out. Okay. And you know what? I should add some Angelina. I'm going to do that on the next layer. Okay. Yeah, and I'm trying to add like the Angelina. Um, oh, thank you. It, yep, we're working on it. So we'll see when I pop it out. I try to add, add the Angelina kind of towards with the fine fibers only because I found that sometimes the Angelina, if I put it in too close to the curls, like towards what's going to be the top of the Rolag, then it's Rolag. It's going to it's going to end up kind of getting everywhere. It comes out more. So if I can get it towards the inside, it won't come out as much. Um, but it'll still be in the yarn. All right, so again, I'm going to go back over with the dog brush, see how it kind of pushes it down. All right, and then go back over it. Oh, it's a hot mess. Go back over it with this. My board's getting kind of full. Now at this point, I can also go over with my, with this um, hand card. And that's going to actually kind of blend um, the, the, those two layers, the, the, this one with the sea cell and this one with the alpaca in a little bit. So... It's going to smooth it. As you can see, it comes out with a bunch of this. It also kind of fluffs it up a little bit. Clean that off of here. All right. And then we're going to go back with this. All right. All right. So the last layer that I'm going to add maybe the second to last layer. I'm going to add some of this. This is um, Angora. 
So this is really fly away type of stuff. Um, <laughs> anyway, that and I'm going to add some of this um, soy silk, or this could be milk silk. I, I, my batch got mixed up, so I'm not sure what this is. It's either soy or milk. That I know. All right, that and these, this together. And I'm also going to throw in just a little bit of this Angelina. Now the Angelina, I'm just going to, I'm going to do that first. I'm just going to drag just a little bit of sparkle. This is the Marcasite, so it's kind of that charcoal black shiny, which is going to pick up some of the dark tones in this fiber, as well as this chocolate brown, and just kind of pop it with a little bit of light. All right. See it spun up. Yeah, you know what? I probably, maybe next week I can do where I spin it. Or the week after. How, how would you guys like that? To see uh, me putting that, um, spinning these roll logs up next week. I could do that. All right. So then I'm going to add this milk silk. Do I want to push that? Uh, yeah, let me push that down a little bit. I have a feeling if I start to drag this stuff in across, it's just going to pull that Angelina right up. All right. So this milk silk, since it's real contrasting, I'm just going to do a streak or two here and here. All right. And then I'm going to go in with this Angora put a little bit in there. And then here. All right. And I'm going to brush it down with this. is getting real fly away down here. Boy. <laughs> All right. It's almost like brushing hair, right? Okay. There we go. All right. So that's that's pretty full. I mean, I probably could go another layer or two, but I'm going to stop there. All right, right on. Yay, okay, so it's it's settled. We're gonna spin this up next week. We'll do it at the same time. Does this time work well for you guys? I could totally do that. I have to redo the setup, but I could totally do it. All right, so let me get this out of the way. So that's where this kind of comes in because I don't know if you guys can see how how the the curls kind of get stuck in the board because I had pushed them all down in there. All right. So you take your two rods. And you just roll that up. And when I get to all these bits here, that's where I take this cleaner. Roll these up. Mention fly. I mentioned fly. I what? Would you ever spritz it with something? You know, that's a good idea. I could give that a try. I have a spray bottle right over here. So as soon as I do this, let's try that. That might help it. Yeah, because that fly away. <laughs> I'm going to be finding that, that fiber for days. I 
and this is where it gets tedious. Tedious, tedious, tedious. Okay. All right. to this end, I'm going to kind of, this is where I'm going to do that little bit of drafting. I'm going to drag it and roll it. Drag it and roll it. See, and that's kind of locking those fibers in there a little bit so they're not as fly away. See? Ta-da! <laughs> take one stick out, take the next stick out, and there's that one. Of course, it has that hot green on the inside, so when you roll it up, you wouldn't know until you you get the uh, until you start spinning it. <laughs> all right, let's do another one. And I'm gonna get the all right. I'll be right back because I'm gonna get my spray bottle that I have right over here. And we're gonna try that trick. Up. There we go. All right, we'll try that. I don't want to get it too wet because kind of like brushing wet hair, how sometimes that'll break it. I don't want to, but maybe just a light spritz might help it. So we're gonna give it a try. Okay, let me. I'm gonna go back through and see if we have any other questions. Where do you get your fiber? Uh, all right. Awesome. Okay, if somebody, um, if I didn't answer your question, repost it because I might have missed it. I hope I didn't. I'm trying to do it. Anyway, all right. Let's let's do let's do a willy nilly one since we did this with it. I'm gonna save this. Let me get my tools out of my stash. This is how you lose tools. I find them months later in my fiber bin. All right. So I'm going to save. What I like to do, too, is, is save this. And I'll just make a series. I'll make a series of the same one. So I can make, you know, maybe four more that are very similar to this, to this one. All right. But let's do a willy-nilly one. Willy-nilly. All right, I'm going to go with, let's do some blues this time. So we're going to go with this, and put all these down here. And I'm going to grab, let's start with these locks right here. I've got this brown, do I want to use that? Yes. Now, the willy-nilly, um, I took Lexi Bogers, um, and she's with... Uh, uh, Plucky Fluff, and she did, oh wait, let me see if I have that book right here, I'm sure I do, okay, if this book, no, this book is awesome, can you, can you see that, get this book, this book is awesome, she's like, she's like the first lady of art yarn, anyway, she had a class in Asheville, and I took her class, and Everybody had to bring some kind of fiber to put into this big uh, mesh of, of fiber that everybody picked from. And she, and, she, and I love her, her philosophy of sometimes if you just don't pay attention, you know, you don't overthink your colorways too much, you really can't go wrong. And K facet. Gosh, I always slay that. It, I know it's supposed to be like safe asset. K Facet um, has said that if you if your colorway is not working, add 15 more colors. And I find that true because if you think about the way the way quilters work, the the better quilts are always the ones that use the pattern fabrics because it gives somehow it gives those quilts depth. So we're going to use that same philosophy as we're doing this back. So rather than sticking with just a few colors, we're just going to willy-nilly pull stuff from this bin. 
even though I kind of am matching it to this. Okay, we won't do that. We're going to stop doing that. We're just going to randomly pull some stuff out of the bin and get a crazy bat. And then next week, I'm going to spin it up and we're going to see how cool that yarn's going to look because it's not this, it's going to have so much depth because it'll have a lot of color. All right, willy nilly. Okay, piece of sari silk and a piece of denim. Sorry, so okay. Oh, here's a big old willy nilly batch. Let's put all that in there. Now, <laughs> oh, this is a hot mess, but I love it. Okay, this <laughs> this farm wool got somewhat felted, but let me tell you, this is the best stuff for art yarn. I'm, okay, can you see this? This is the best stuff for art yarn because all the that's all going to be texture. And it's that crazy purple color with a little bit of brown and a little bit of green. And I've got all kinds of, look at this, I've got all kinds of like Angelina and Sari fibers all stuck in there too. All right. So let's just throw some of that in there. Oh, look at this. That's a totally different color right there too. I must have closed my eyes and picked some dye pot to pick some jars of dye and just threw it in. All right. Okay. Let's so again with this stuff, I'm just going to kind of press it in with my. I tell you what, the sorry ribbon's not really going to go down in there. shaking that camera a bit, aren't I? All right, I'll try not to do that. Okay, let's add some of this. Now, when I add some of these thrums, what I, it's usually a good idea to cut them. So I'm just going to randomly do a little bit of cutting and turn it down. Now this I can kind of drag a little bit. And actually, it's kind of cool because sometimes when you drag little remnant bits of yarn, it'll it'll card some of that fuzz out of the yarn, and it'll help it stick to the bat a little better. And it'll help um, add some fibers that'll give a little more grab when you're spinning. All right, let's do a little more. Let's throw in some of this. This one I'm gonna where I need to put that. I'll poke it with my big brush. There we go. Get that way down in there. Okay. There's that. I'm gonna add some more of this this hot mess. Yeah, this, this is the type of stuff that would be a nightmare trying to card it into something smooth for for like a like a two ply or some a really smoothy kind of yarn. There we go. Yay, I'm glad you're gonna try some art yarn. That's awesome. Art yarn's addictive. It really is. You know, I, I think a lot of people, a lot of times people don't want to do art yarn, um, A, because it just, you think, well, is, that's the messiest art thing. Sometimes it doesn't feel like art, but, um, and also too, because a lot of, um, knitting patterns aren't designed for art yarn. I mean, honestly, the simpler the pattern, I mean, and you can only have so many scarves, right? You could do like a chunky hat, or you could, um, 
or you could do like a chunky hat and that works or you can uh, um, do like real simple like a big chunky sweater using fat needles and that's the, the thing I mean you can just do garter stitch or even just a very fat stitch regular knitting stitch with art yarn and it's gonna look awesome I mean the simpler the pattern and the stitch the better art yarn looks so anyway all right we have another question except for Angelina do you use just natural fibers um no not really I mean I guess maybe I do um sometimes there's no telling what's in here in my thrums and especially like uh like okay this was part of a weaving that's fun fur y'all that's that's acrylic <laughs> fun fur so yeah and and if I get stuff like this is this is yarn from a friend this is like a remnant of something she was working on this this could have some acrylic in it um also I mean I guess banana fiber is an um Angelina Firestar is not excuse me do I have Firestar I don't think I have any Firestar left um Firestar is a kind of nylon and nylon fibers you can dye with acid dyes with wool so um so sometimes I would do some Firestar and that would give a little bit of glitter here's some Firestar in this I don't know if you can see how that has like a bit of a sheen that's a nylon fiber but for the most part yeah I guess um, I I don't do I don't really do um, fiber reactive dyes so I don't do a lot of like the rayons or cotton I stick to wool and um, stuff that can be in that can be dyed with acid dyes which tend to be like animal fibers um, with the exception of like silk can go either way and sea cell um, sometimes dies like but that's like an algae but sometimes that dies um, a little bit with the acid dyes so anyway uh, so or weave a panel and knit sleeves with a smoother yarn yes I've seen that where you weave a panel and then you knit the sleeves with a smoother yarn oh yeah I've seen people where people will do like, let me switch this, where they'll do like a vest, like a woven panel for, for the, you know, this part of the vest, and then they'll weave the side parts connecting the panels together. And that looks really beautiful, especially if you do like a coordinating, like a sock yarn or a much smoother yarn, it looks really, really cool. Yes, that's a great thing to do. That would look awesome. So, all right, where was I? I'm still adding. So we've got all this chunk in here. Let's add, I'm gonna add some of this brown farm wool. This is more of that Corydale. And the reason why is because there's a lot of browns in here and I think that's gonna anchor some of that color a little bit. All right, add that. This, this stuff, I'm trying to fill in some of the, the blank spaces, like, you know, here's a blank space. So it doesn't get too thick in one area. I tend to get kind of thin on my ends, which is fine. I mean, I guess when you're, you're, uh, makes it a little easier to start out. Y'all, I couldn't find my phone before I went live. And I have this sinking feeling my phone is sitting somewhere in the studio, and I'm hoping nobody's going to call. <laughs> so you might hear a phone. Well, hopefully not. All right. So again, the dog brush. I tell you, worth the five bucks. Um, do you extend the naturals with nylon, other than Firestar, and how does it blend on the blending board? You know, I don't. If if the not if I had um, you know they make the the wool with the nylon I, I know what you mean like um, 
for sock yarns and stuff like that. If I were going to blend something like that, I actually, and if I didn't have a drum carter, I would actually, first thing I would do is maybe drum, do that on a drum carter on, on something finer. Because with the nylon, when you're blending fibers, fibers to extend them, I kind of feel like the blending board isn't the best solution for that. Although it might be, I don't know. Maybe it is, I don't know. Or with your hand cards, because the hand cards really, really, really blend the fibers. I mean, I couldn't do a, I, it would be harder for me to do an art yarn roll log with the hand cards. But I would just either do it on a drum carter as opposed to on the blending board. But that being said, um, if I really wanted it blended, I would just, I would purchase the roving blended. And, and that's generally what I would do, like, um, let's see, this is, whoop. this is a sea cell and merino, and rather than buying the sea cell and blending it myself, a lot of times it's just easier to buy the roving, and it's not that, it's not that. And the labor that you would take in trying to really finely blend something, um, it's a lot of times easier just to buy it already blended because it's not that much more to get a blend. And it's actually, it might be a little cheaper than buying just the wool outright. Um, and the labor that it would take to really blend it well, um, you would, it's just a little better to go ahead and get the roving. But that's just my opinion. So, um, but if you had like, Let's say you had an alpaca farm and you wanted to extend it with a little bit of nylon or rayon or whatever. Um, well, for that matter, you could just send it to a fiber mill and get them to do it. I mean, I would actually consider doing that. I think um, if you're going to do it yourself, it would be with the intention of having some, some more streaks of that fiber in there to um for show does that make sense anyway yeah that's that's generally what i would do and that's why too with the fire star um usually when i'm adding fire star to a bat it's because i want it to be some kind of textural type of thing so i hope that makes sense anyway all right so we have this layer of farm wool I want, oh, you know what? I'm going to add some of this since we're willy nillying it. This is that um, upcycled denim. So I think they take denim and break it up and then card it, put it through a carder so it comes out to be this fiber. And I think that's exactly what they did with that. This stuff, the only thing, this is, this is sorry silk done that way, which is really cool. I don't know if you guys, let me see see how it has like little f puffs of stuff but it also has it also has threads anyway so that's kind of similar with this denim you're welcome I hope that yeah I hope that answers the question so all right and we do that so that's, yeah, let's move on to some finer stuff. All right. Oh, you know what? I want to add. Oh, let's add this. <laughs> I really don't like this color. I don't. Um, normally I would over dye something like this, but for this willy nilly bat, sometimes if you add something you hate with something you love, then it may, it amplifies the colors you love a little bit more. And it actually makes you have a new passion for a color that you weren't that sure about. All right, adding that. I'm just gonna add a few streaks of that though. Okay, now let's add, you know what, let's add some of this, the sea cell, 
the sea cell merino one. All right, so this I'm going to add in a, like a more a more even layer. But look how it, it looks next to that that orange is kind of cool. I kind of like that. That teal's popping out next to that orange. Long time. All right, we've been uh, on here for about an hour. Right, I'm going to finish this one up and then we'll be done. Okay, there's that. Push it down with this brush. All right, so since there's, I'm going to add some more because there's some of this denim still popping out and if I, I want to go over it with with this to blend it a little more but if I do that it's going to actually pull that up a little bit so I'm going to add some more of this try this spray because this is starting to fly up a little bit. Let's see how that does. Did I do this? I think I did this one already. All right, this one. You know, that seemed to do it. It doesn't feel as fly away. All right, the spray bottle. We're adding it to my new tools. Yeah, look at that. That's much better down here probably stand to spray it towards the top too. All right, let's do that. There we go. Great tip. Love that. All right. Let's see. Okay. There's that. Now I want to add some sparkly or something. Let's add this bluish Angelina here just a little bit there's that and then I'm going to add a layer of this green alpaca is this alpaca I think this is <laughs> I'm not even sure I remember what this is. I think it's alpaca. Okay, just a little bit of that. And I think we're going to call it done after that. Find it down. Brush it with this. Push it down as well. I should have sprayed that because now that's fly away. There we go. Okay. I think I'm going to be done because I can see that this is fluffed out towards the top of the teeth. I don't know if you guys can see that. Question. Do you lose shorter fibers when you spin? The denim looks short. Yeah, the denim is kind of short. Um, it, it has a little bit of a, a little bit of a fur to it. And I think when I'm carting it in with some of these that, yeah, I might actually lose a little bit of that. But when I get to it, I try to, if I get to some of these hair, these, these, this, uh, stringy parts, sometimes I might try to manipulate some of that wool around that. And, and I'll show you when we spin it next week. Cause yeah, you're right. Sometimes that stuff does fall out. But for the most part, there's enough enough hair on there that it, it it kind of holds it in place. And if I can wedge it in between 
the uh, the wool so you know I, I put it between the farm wool and the roving that I put in there that sometimes that sandwiches the short fibers and that's another trick too when you're making art yarn um, if you're doing it on a drum carter what you do is you sandwich your shorter fibers in between your longer fibers so you would do like a layer of roving 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 and then put all your 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 stuff like this and like your Angelina and your little uh, short pieces of this and you smash it in between another layer of roving and then you run that through the carter and what that does is it tricks it tricks that liquor drum into thinking you're just carding regular wool and it ends up blending the shorter fibers kind of sandwiched in between the wool so anyway and the same theory kind of goes with when you're spinning it, that, that it kind of sandwiches it in a little bit if you have enough wool on either side. But you're right, sometimes it will fall out. Like right now, there's some pieces that I want to come out here. Okay, so. And this might be a little tricky because I have a feeling some of those yarn bits are going to fall out too. So you can see. Right. Ooh, we had a lot of stuff in this one. Look at that. It looks so smooth on the top and it's just a hot mess on the bottom. Losing so much on that liquor. There we go. You know what I might do for this? It seems like it would have behooved me to do a very thin layer of roving. I might try that in the next uh, vlog I make, and I'll come back and share that with you guys because this is already an hour long, but it's been fun. I've had fun doing this with you guys. Okay. All right. So we've got. Ooh, let's get the last of that. All right, so again, I'm going to take some of that, stretch it, and roll it, and try and lock some of those smaller pieces in. Oh, that piece is just going to have to do its own thing. All right, so that's a big old messy one, but that's going to be fun to, to spin. Yay! All right. Where's that? All right, you guys. So, uh, yeah, you see there's a lot of that little stuff in there. So, yeah, I might the next one. Let's see if I can get some of this off of here. And that's what this is good for. You see how it's cleaning that little stuff right up. All right. So yeah, I would do, I think the next one, if I put more of those yarn bits in, just, just almost dragging it just lightly. You see how there's barely anything on there? That, I think, just a super light. That might be enough to hold it in and not cover them up. So, yeah, we'll have to do that one on the next one. Anyway, all right. 
Let me switch this. All right, you guys. That was fun. All right, so next week I'm going to do the same thing. Um, do the same live, but we're going to spin these roll logs. And I'm going to do another one, um, a couple more. And I'll just show you how I just do a continuous spin on that stuff. Yay! I'm glad you guys enjoyed it. I, I, I hope you did learn uh, some new tricks. Anyway, and thanks for, for that. I love that, that idea. That really helped a lot. So thank you. Anyway, all right. So enjoy your Sunday. Again, I'm Stacy Budge Camison, and I'm going to put, I'm going to go back through and, and remember which links I said I was going to put in the description down below. So, and I will see you guys next week. Bye, y'all. Thanks for joining.